And people are saying, well, you know, it doesn't talk a lot about born again. And it mentions it a couple of times. Do you think that doesn't make it important? Right. If Christ himself said, you must be born again. Right. Right? To enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, if that's your door to heaven, then you need to know what you just did. The most powerful thing in your life just happened to you. That's what happened. And then raise your kids knowing that. That's right. We have a generation being born now that won't ever know sin. They'll live in the glory, operate in the glory, carry the glory. Amen? Yeah. Because we will. We will be examples. He's not overlooking anybody in this time. It doesn't matter if you're 99 or 9 or 5. My grandson already knows how to declare and decree and use the host as a weapon for them. I forgot what I was going to talk about. <laughs> There's too much to say. Fun is a weapon. You know why? Because you feel like little kids when you're having fun. The enemy cannot put thoughts in your head. It can't even penetrate you. When you're out there running and laughing, there is no way he can put them in your head. So it is a powerful weapon. Yes, I know it heals. It says it's medicine, right? A part of that medicine is emotional medicine. Yeah. It's physical medicine, emotional medicine. Are you kidding? Fill your soul with laughter. It's a medicine in every way, but in this day, God said it will be a weapon. You must have fun because they're having fun in heaven. And if we're going to live on earth as they do in heaven, isn't that what that scripture says? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is God the Father's time to bring the kingdom of heaven to this earth because we have been asking for it. Is that right? Yes. In Matthew, correct? Yes. Yeah. And I tell you, this is the Father speaking because he says, we say, Jesus said, say this. Our Father. Say it. Our Father. That means he's talking about the Father, right? Yes. Where is he at? Yes. Who is in heaven? Right? Right. Holy is his name. Yes. So what are we saying next to the Father? Your kingdom come. Okay? His kingdom is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus Christ will establish in the millennial age, now he already is the king of this world, we know that, I know all that, but he will manifest his kingdom sitting on the throne in Jerusalem for a thousand years. So we need heaven on this earth right now. That doesn't mean the son is not a part of that. He talked, he, he talked about the gospel of the kingdom. Right. What kingdom? Mm -hmm. The kingdom of heaven. So he connected us right there to heaven. Yeah. Right? Look up. That's where your help come from. Think on thoughts. Think on those things above. Is that correct? That's right. You're talking about heaven all the time. And so he said, pray this. Our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. That's the kingdom of heaven. Your kingdom come. What does that look like? Let's not say it. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We were asking for a whole new way of life. Because we sure haven't been living it. Heaven has no sickness, no fear, no hate, no lack. It does no worry, no cares, no gossiping, backbiting, judging, no criticizing. But there's creation, invention, there's joy unspeakable. There is wonder, there is splendor. No one is sick. There's no sickness there. There's no agony, no suffering. There's no mental torment. You love everybody in heaven. And you have a lot of fun. You live worship. You become living worship. You see worship. When you worship, you ride on your worship across the sky of heaven. It transports you. Ooh, yeah. That's why when we worship here, we feel like we're being transported. That's right. Say amen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Does it say that he likes the praises of his people? What does that scripture say? Say, inhabits 
So in heaven, when you worship, he calls you with that worship. Yeah. He is going to inhabit you yeah. and call you to the throne room. If you're somewhere in heaven worshiping, you're caught up and right on that very worship, which then becomes a way to be transported. Yeah. Right. Oh, you're really going to go there. Yeah. Not feel like you're going there. Wow. wow. Praise is so powerful down here. Psalms 149 says that it binds the enemy, mm -hmm. say the devil, the devil, in fetters of iron. In fetters of iron. Yeah. So praise is a weapon too, right? Yes. We have these amazing weapons he's given us. The anointing that breaks the yoke. Right. Fun that you've laughed so much and having fun like a child and you can't get to you. Praise puts the enemy in fetters of iron. Is this true? Yeah. Yes. Your very word speaking life, it, 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 the enemy will run from you when you submit yourself under the hand of God and what? Say it loud. Resist, Resist. The, uh, the devil. He will what? So the Father is offering you revelation right now in great detail how to do all of that. Yes. If he wants you to live in heaven culture, I've been caught up to heaven for over 20 years. Thousands of times, not a couple hundred. Okay, thousands. I go every day. I went this morning. The Father was sharing new revelation with me. Saying the world is going to run after us as believers. Yes, yes. They won't be despising. The evil people will always despise. But the secular world will run after us because of what we carry, who we manifest, the greater works that we do, the life we speak. We will bring life everywhere we go. Yes. yes. So what are you planning in your life right now? Right. If we're supposed to be these people living on earth as they do in heaven, then you need to change your mindset of who you really are. Yeah. He said you're kings and priests unto your God. That's royalty. Yeah. That's not being a doormat. That's right. That's right. Wow. Nobody yeah. in here is a doormat. The devil is the doormat. Yeah. So wipe your feet on him. Live for Christ. Rule and reign. Get your weapons out and get ready. Amen? Amen. We are actually called superheroes for heaven. Yeah. Christ is our superhero, but right now, if you're living and you're a believer, they call you superheroes for heaven. Mm. Because we're manifesting and living heaven culture on this earth, the world will know there is a God. Amen? Amen? Amen. I actually have a CD. There I am. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yes, I have a superhero costume on me right there. And it is hilarious. You just were a weapon when you laugh. There you go. It says, <laughs> Jesus gave us power. We have superpowers. Okay, say we live in the supernatural. <laughs> We came from a supernatural home. We have a supernatural God who gave us his power. That's superpower. That makes me a superhero. We help rescue people. We push back darkness. We bombard hell's gates. I, can't, I gotta make sure we make time for the drawings. Anyway. So anyway, that was not my choice to put that on the cover, okay? My, uh, my graphic artist and my, my sister-in-law, Margaret, they were in cahoots together with us. I actually have posters like that, okay? 
I'm going to do you things, I sign them and give them to them. <laughs> Revealing of the kings, what I was just telling you about. And people try, they always say, you're not going to be able to tell me this stuff doesn't happen because you know what? The Father has already showed me in the Word where it was. Mm -hmm. I already told you, I knew the Word, I studied the Word, I loved the Word, I would declare the Word, I lived the Word. Spiritual kings, eternal positions and levels of authority. Eternal positions and levels of authority. So are you planning for eternity? Yeah. Right. You know, you do house planning, you do wedding plans, you do all kinds of planning, but the most important planning is eternal planning. Amen? It says male and female kings because... There is no That's right. gender in the spirit, okay? Right. Yeah. Spiritual things, there is no gender, amen? By the way, man made up the word prophetess. Amen. God says prophet. prophet. Yes. We are prophets. Yes. He said, I don't do anything <laughs> until I share my signals with my friends, the what? Prophets. See? <laughs> and this whole thing about being a king he already said that right when he said you're kings and priests unto your God he didn't mean only the guys if not, remember this is a women's meeting so just guys suck it up <laughs> <laughs> we already knew you were but we're now finding out we are amen <laughs> we can make it happen again. <laughs> so we are kings and priests unto our God and there's, uh, these are eternal positions. Tell me a long time ago, the Bible ministry is, say, temporal. Temporal. Say it. It's for this earth. They don't have them in heaven. They don't have salvation crusades in heaven. You cannot labor for Christ in heaven. Is that right? Right. Yeah. However, Christ said, you will rule with me now on this earth and in what? The time to come. With these are eternal, eternal positions. Amen. So consider what you're doing with your life, ruling with Christ now and in the future. And this is about spiritual kings, and it's also in the Word. And Christ Himself told me this. He said it was so important these spiritual kings that I wrote it on myself. I am the King of Kings. And the Lord of Lords. Those are spiritual kings and lords. Yes. Say Christ, Christ is a king, is a king of, kings. of kings. He is the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord of hosts. And he's our high priest. And he's our high priest. Say he had every one of those levels and walked in them. We are joint heirs. So don't let anybody tell you that is not true. Amen. He wrote it on himself. It was so important. So I, I, I think I'm almost, I'm kind of done with my introduction. <laughs> I have no concept of time whatsoever. People say, why do you have to bring another person with you? Why can't you come by yourself? Because I would be in the same airport I started from, sharing with people. You know, sharing with people, where were the people? They ask me about my pink hair, they hear about heaven, there you go. At the check-in, at the gate, walking down, you know, the, the aisles of the airports, the, the security people beginning to recognize me. <laughs> yeah, I can't help it because the Holy Spirit said, if they're there, there is any living human being, if they are there, you will share. So I have people to pull me away from you at the end of the meetings when you want to have another two-hour meeting. <laughs> I don't blame you. And the only ones who never ask me questions are my family. <laughs> Which comes with the territory. And I might just let you know this. When they came after Jesus, remember that? Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside calling for you. They didn't want him to come and preach to them. They wanted him back home because he turned the water into heaven's wine, not earthly wine. Right. right. And they had heaven's wine at home all the time, 
That's why Mary knew he could do it. They were never sick because of his presence. They were never without food. He multiplied the food all the time at home. He practiced the whole time he was growing up. So when he wasn't there, they didn't have it. Okay, your ministry's over. You've been preaching. This is good enough. You've done some miracles. Now just come on and come home. That's what they wanted. They wanted to come back home. But they were not impressed, you know. You know, they weren't sitting there listening to him. Unless maybe they were eating. They probably came for the food. No, I'm not. He did have a couple of them. I mean, they did know who he was, but they had no understanding of what that really meant. Mary certainly knew. Mm -hmm. She missed him. She wanted, but she knew his destiny. Amen. Amen. So a prophet is without honor in his own home it is absolutely true. My socks need to be cleaned. I cannot find the ketchup in the refrigerator. What are we going to eat? I still get it. My kids, mom, can we go to the mall and go shopping? My daughters, of course. Um, now, I do have one that's most like me, and she is exactly like me. <laughs> the devil's going to have a big handful with her. <laughs> she's already dangerous. Yes, she is. And we butt heads all the time because she's the most likely. Trust me, your, your child, you're the most likely. You will butt heads with that. Say amen. amen. If you have real challenging kids, they're the most anointed ones you have. I hope that helps you. <laughs> Those who are strong anointed will be the most challenging. That's the nicest way I can say it. The ones you would like to send away and come back maybe 15 years later. <laughs> maybe 20. <laughs> They can make, help make the house payments. <laughs> I know. I was raised in that tribe, remember? <laughs> well, it really is okay to laugh. And I have a lot of funny things I was going to share with you, but I will share some of them anyway, okay? <laughs> I make heaven laugh all the time. That's probably why they picked me, because... Uh, other than the help of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, there's no telling where I would have been or what I would have done in my life. I want, well, I wanted to live alone in a nice executive apartment with no children. <laughs> I'd already helped raise a tribe, okay? Fed them, changed them, helped them with their homework, sat them when they're sick, prayed for them, made sure they got to school. I mean, that was, that was my life pretty much. And I got paid uh, with Hershey's chocolate candy bars with almonds in them when I babysat. Because I tell you, chocolate, if there was money in heaven, it would be chocolate. Because yeah. even, you know, Godiva, they don't have the best chocolate. Ghirardelli does not have the best. Heaven has the best chocolate, okay? Yeah. And they have plenty of it. So I was, I was raised uh, in this tribe by a very loving wonderful father who had an amazing relationship with God. Angels would appear in the car, give him assignments, and they would leave. It was like normal for him. So it was normal for me to know about heaven when I grew up. It was normal to have miracles in our home because if anybody got sick or injured, we went and got prayed and Jesus healed us. This was our way of life. If we ran out of something, we prayed because, well, we ran out because we gave it away. We would take food off our stove and give it away to people. And then God would have people bring food already cooked and set on our plates we had set on our table because we knew it was coming. I lived by faith. I still live by faith. Because you're not ever going to get anything without it. Amen? If your faith doesn't grow, then you can't go to higher levels. There's a time in your life you start out by trusting God. You trust Him. We all say we trust Him. Then you get to a level where you actually believe Him. And after you walk in believing Him for a while, there is a day in your life where you step off that threshold into faith. And then things really begin to change. But you also go into a higher level of processing. So you can't avoid the process. You can't avoid the process. You're not going to. You 
processed me for 40 years. Extreme pro- Because he writes down a lot of things we say, but when we choose our will for something, he always writes it down. If you're really serious about things in your life changing, you need to say, I choose with my will. I choose with my will to give up this thing and that thing, to stop doing this and that. I choose with my will to step into the new. I choose with my will to surrender. Every time you need me to surrender, Amen. I choose with my will to lay down my life and live in you. Yeah. I choose with my will to rule and reign with Christ. Yes. It's yes. important that you say yes to it. Yeah. Many are called because they didn't choose to be chosen. Why did only a few get chosen? Because only a few said yes. He told me that a long time ago because I've heard that my whole life. I went, wow, was he that picky? <laughs> if, if, if many are called, but just a few are chosen, how come? And he answered that one day. He said, because they're the only ones who chose to say yes. Yeah, that's good. Your will that he put in you, your soul, is so important. We're going to hear more about that tomorrow night. But it's so important to laugh. Laughter gets stored in your soul. Say the joy of the Lord, the of the Lord is, my strength, is my strength, not the doom and gloom. So that means if you're feeling yourself a doom and gloom, you aren't going to have any joy. If you become legalistic and try to, I want every T crossed and every I dotted, because if I don't see that in the Word, I don't believe it. Well, microwaves aren't in there. Okay? They're not in there, neither are lattes. <laughs> Caramel macchiatas. <laughs> Disney World. But that's fun. There's a lot of things I can say about that. There are measures that you don't go past. Okay. Don't be involved in witchcraft in your life. They try to make it fun, exciting. Don't watch anything that says there's good witchcraft and bad witchcraft. Do not watch it. Okay? You can choose. I'm telling you, you always can choose. But I'm letting you know from heaven, don't partake of anything that says there's good witchcraft and bad witchcraft. It's dangerous. Right. Because what the enemy is planning in the last days is that there will be good witchcraft demonstrated. Wow. Oh, we're doing the greater works and the miraculous There'll be witches who say the witches raising people from the dead and saying we're good. Because we've been seated with it for years, like with Harry Potter. Wow. That's right. Go there. Say amen. See, revelation helps you. It helps you. It reveals things to you. God is revealing him and exposing darkness. Right. In this age, more than ever before, he's exposing darkness in our lives. That's good. Because it rescues us. From lives of torment, of failure, you wonder why you're under attack all the time. Because if you have that stuff in your home, you have opened the door until the enemy come right on in. That's good. Because what you choose to watch, you are approving of it. Didn't you know that? That's good. And, and people go, well, I'll wait till our kids go to bed. You still let it in your house. That's right. Your kids will have dreams about it. Whatever you let in your home, whatever you enter into in your home walls will enter into your home. So just say no. Everybody say, just say no. Just say no. It's the same thing with sexuality. The same thing with graphic violence. 
When profane language, people go, well, there's no sex in this movie, I'll watch it, but they, 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 they are swear profane language. Do you know God will not let me allow me to listen to anyone that uses his name in vain? I can't watch anything where that takes off half the movies. Yeah. He won't, because he is not going to curse mm -hmm. people. Do you know that's what they're saying when they say that? When they say those words, they're telling God to curse. Does God say to curse things or curse people? No. He says the opposite, right? Well, when you listen to that, it's going in your soul. It'll make you eventually say it. Right. Yeah. If you listen to it all the time, because it's going in your soul, you will do that or say that. That's why criminals commit crime. Yeah. That's why they can't be made. It doesn't matter how much rehabilitation they give them. The crime is in their soul. And what your soul is your mind, your will, and emotions. Your emotions cause you to do activities. It's not just laughing and crying, it's your actions. Those emotions, those layers in you, you have layers in your soul and stuff gets stored there. God said this revelation will change the way, not just the body of Christless, but the whole world. Amen. We need to have a soul check out. That's tomorrow night's message. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> it's one of the most powerful revelations he gave me. It changed me. Yeah. It changed every day of my life. Because you don't have to keep junk and garbage in you. Yeah. If you live in a home where you become, your soul becomes so vexed because of the darkness there, and maybe something, you maybe can't do anything about it. Like, if, especially if you live with other people, or maybe your parents a lot, but you don't want it. There's all kinds of situations. You're in a college dorm, everybody in there is doing stuff like that. Well, I'm going to share tomorrow night how you can stop all that stuff. Amen. Okay. We